evening and warm welcome to you all for the Total Smart Talk series lecture four, Bridge Engineering, a Bridge to the Future by Engineer Baiju PB. Turtle Smart Solutions LLP is a civil engineering consulting firm in Kerala, which has acclaimed outstanding reputation over a small period of time. The firm concentrates in design and PNC services of amenities like roads and highways, bridges, modern slaughterhouses, sewage treatment plants, community development and town planning projects, and allied sectors. The firm works with contractors by providing project management consultancy services and our laboratory services in their works and helps them improve their construction quality. The firm believes that academic industrial collaborations can impart significant contribution to engineering community. Smart Talk Series is such an initiative to provide a knowledge sharing platform among engineers through interactions with eminent technocrats from academics and also industry. And today we have our fourth lecture in the series organized in connotation with Association of Engineers, Kerala, Thiruvanthapuram District Center about bridge engineering by an eminent industry expert who has vast experience in execution of bridge works. Now, I request engineer R.S. Ganga, executive engineer, Thiruvanthapuram Corporation and district president of Association of Engineers, Kerala, AOEK, to deliver a few words about AOEK. Thank you, Megha. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the organization Association of Engineers Kerala, I would like to thank everyone who has joined us today. Association of Engineers Kerala is a non-profit organization with a strength of uh, 4,000 plus engineers from the public works, uh, irrigation, and local self-government departments of Government of Kerala. Our association promotes uh, the technical as well as non-technical interest of the members. For this, we conduct annual sports and cultural meets and also publish periodicals um, containing articles authored by engineers regarding various subjects. As a part of updating our engineers with the latest technologies, we regularly conduct technical sessions, and this is our fourth session of the year. Before we get started, I want to sincerely acknowledge the efforts of the organizers, Turtle Smart Solutions, for conducting this event. I would also like to express my gratitude on behalf of the Trivandrum District Committee to Mr. Baiju PB, Assistant Executive Engineer, Kerala PWD, for sharing his valuable knowledge with us. This evening, we are going to take a look at the various aspects of uh, bridge engineering. In the months to come, we will get to learn, practice, and initiate programs through seminars and specially designed programs to improve our professional skill set. I hope this session regarding bridge engineering, a bridge to the future, will help you to construct better structures and to provide better service to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ganga ma'am. Now I request Mr. Jin Korean Andrews, consultant Turtle Smart Solutions LLP and assistant professor, Department of Civil Engineering, St. Gitts College of Engineering to formally invite and introduce our guest speaker. Good evening all. Today, the job interested with me is to introduce the speaker of the day, Mr. Baiju PB, who is presently working as the Assistant Executive Engineer, Kerala PWD, KRFB PMU Division, Coilco. Engineer Baiju PB did his B.Tech in Civil Engineering from MA College of Engineering, Kodamangalam. And he's a lifetime member of Indian Road Congress and Indian Institute of Bridge Engineers, and also a member of Indian Building Congress and Indian Conrad Institute. He has received the Best Engineer Award by Government of Kerala in the year 2017 and also the Best Engineer Award by Association of Engineers Kerala in 2015. And he has won ICI awards for various projects in 2016, 17, 18 and 19. He has 17 years of experience in planning, design and execution of infrastructure projects in government sector. He has multidisciplinary experience in project planning and coordination and monitoring. Is well versed with project administration and project cost estimation. Has delivered more than 80 technical seminar on quality control, RCC, bridge engineering, land acquisition, etc. For engineers, contractors, and engineering students. He has was, worked as guest faculty at IMG Coricode and Trivandrum, and also a guest faculty at Kerala Highway Research Institute Trivandrum, and a team member for training need analysis for PWD at IMG. We are lucky to have a person with vast experience and practical knowledge 
without any further delay i invite engineer byju pb for the session over to you sir thank you thank you well thank you sir uh, now i will share my slide i think i am audible sir okay yes, you are audible So I think uh, you can see my uh, screen. I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, so can we make, make it to okay? Full good screen? evening. Good evening, oh, sir. What I am here. And sir, can I make it to full screen? Sir, now it is full screen here. Okay. Okay, sir. You can continue. Okay. Okay. Good evening, all. Uh, today we will discuss about uh, bridge engineering and. Uh, I would like to talk about the uh, basic principles of bridge engineering and the new trends in the bridge engineering. We all know bridge constitute a significant portion of the national economy and serve as a foundation for infrastructure development. Several new bridges require to be constructed and numerous existing bridges require to be repaired and retrofitted across the world. This webinar aims to knowledge development on principles of bridge engineering load transfer of mechanism in bridge, in bridge engineering, new bridge construction methodology, investi and investigation for new bridge projects. And uh, we'll discuss emerging global trends in the domain of bridge engineering and also the construction aspects of Tushariget Bridge. And uh, I don't know how much time we'll get, only one hour time is not at all enough for this all these things. Anyway, we'll discuss first the uh, basics of bridge engineering. We know bridge help us to connect to each other and to the world. That's why I like bridges. And what's a bridge? Bridge is a structure which built over us over some physical obstacles, such as a water body, valley, or a road. And uh, bridge where it can be built strong enough to save safely supports its own weight as well as the weight of anything that should pass over it. That's a requirement of a bridge. And definitely. The availability of fund is the one of the other thing for the construction of a bridge. And now we can discuss about the loads coming on the bridge. Simply, we can, uh, if if you are uh, keeping a plank across a uh, plank over a support, and we are uh, moving over the plank, we can see that the plank can go down. It means uh, it, it, it will uh, sag down. That is one reason is it will be sagged down due to its own, its own dead load. And if we are moving, then it will become the live load and it will sag some more. Excuse me, sir. And, uh, your slide is not moving. It's still the first slide. Now also it is the same? Yes, sir. Sir, please share the entire screen. Yes, and I am trying to that one. OK, sir. Now it is changed, yes, I think. Sir. Yes. OK. Then we, if we are moving over this uh, plank, then the load is moving live load. And if some wind is acting on it, then it will be the wind load. And if some earthquake comes, then the uh, earthquake load and we will consider all this load and we will and discuss it later okay now we will go for the history of a bridge and uh, 
the first bridge appeared in nature by themselves a law could be fall across the sea and form a natural bridge. hello when humans started building bridges they built them in simple form out of cut wooden logs or planks or maybe stones that have been fallen from the uh, cliff or something like that one of the oldest arch bridge exists in arkadiko bridge in the greece it is it, is, it was built in 13th 13th century bc and romans were the greatest bridge builders in the ancient times and some of the uh, bridges which are built by the uh, romans are still alive and uh, we can see that this uh, this uh, this bridge this is uh, made by romans in 16th century and uh, here we can see in the 780 we can see that uh, uh, a great stone bridge in china which is still alive and comes to 1880 the first cast iron bridge was built in england and uh, in 1850 uh, britannica tubular bridge was bo uh, built and then uh, truss bridges came in one, uh, 1980 and suspension bridge was in 1920 and in 2000 nearby 2000 priestess to concrete bridges are made. and in india also the similar development was there in uh, the king harshavardhana he was uh, he built a lot of highways and number of bridges and feroz shah who ruled in delhi in mid of 14th century built a number of canals and bridges then uh, during the 16th and 17th century the portuguese made a lot of arch and masonry br bridges in goa they are still alive and uh, one of the oldest stone bridges still used across Ka uh, river kaveri in sri rangapatnam uh, built by tipu sultan and uh, recently uh, the uh, uh, constructed in india uh, the major one is uh, vidyasagar sedu across hooghly and hooghly uh, at calcutta and nalini bridge uh, on river yamuna jamuna at uh, allahabad and indian railways uh, one of the um, major contributor uh, to bridge engineering is the indian railways they are made a lot of steel arch bridges in jammu and kashmir now we can discuss about this uh, classification of bridge. The bridge can be classified according to its uh, type of use, geometry, structural form, and cross sections. According to length of bridge, we can uh, classify the bridge. That is, if the uh, length of a bridge is less than six meter, we uh, we will call it as culvert. And if the length is between six meter to sixty meter. We will call it as a minor bridge and if the length is more than 60 meter we will call it as major bridge and if the length uh, length is more than 120 meters we will call it as long span bridge then um, we will classify the bridge according to its function first comes the river bridge we all know that most probably we are constructing the bridge over a river and that is uh, roadway across the waterway that is river bridge then overpass 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 means uh, flyovers we, we we are very familiar about these flyovers that's overpass and underpass underpass is mainly vup and pup vup is vehicle underpass and pup is people underpass that is a roadway crosses another roadway that is flyover if the vup is uh, vup is nothing but a road will be over a highway mainly a highway will be there and uh, through the um, below that one a small road or uh, narrow road will be provided for the vehicle passage and similarly if this uh, small road be below the uh, highway is provided for people uh, people to pass then it will be pup then the grade separator this is a grade separator in grade separator uh, we will be having two or three highways coming in the same uh, in the opposite direction perpendicular directions then it we will negotiate this junction like this uh, we will uh, take one highway to the, uh, above the other one uh, similar uh, or uh, it can be considered below that one uh, new uh, highway and uh, another highway can be below this way, highway main highway that is uh, grade separator then road over bridge rob rob we all know that road under bridge or rub a road over bridge rob 
that is a roadway crosses a railway the position of uh, roadway according to the roadway we will name it as a road over bridge or road under bridge if the road is under the railway we will call it as road under bridge and road or if it is over road over bridge then comes the viaduct viaduct means there will not be any road or river beneath we will uh, we will construct a viaduct uh, over a valley then comes the causeway causeway means as uh, the road roadway has to cross a some area then it will be a causeway area uh, in some take in some cases uh, this causeway allows the uh, passage of water once in a year or one or two days for a year also then foot over bridge for the pedestrian passage over road that is uh, as the name indicates foot uh, pedestrian can pass over the uh, bridge then subway subway means the pedestrian passage below a road with a stair or ramps that that can be that uh, that are mainly used in the um, main cities the subways then classification criteria for bridge uh, according to type of use the bridge can be used as a road bridge and can be used as a railway bridge and can be used as a pedestrian bridge then according to the geometry the ge according to the geometry uh, mainly the bridges are classified into three categories that is straight bridge skew bridge and curved bridge straight bridge means the bridge will be perpendicular to the uh, center line of the river if uh, the center line of bridge is perpendicular to the center line of uh, river it is known as straight bridges and if uh, the center line of bridge is uh, with a, a, having any angle other than 90 then it is known as skew bridges and curved bridges are nothing but the uh, bridge will be curved in plan its plan will be curved that is curved bridges most probably railways having the uh, ROBs having uh, this uh, curved bridges otherwise we will be uh, trying to construct either the straight bridge or the skew bridge across the river <coughs> Then uh, classification is based on the structural form. Structural form means mainly whatever. Uh, whenever we look out, look outside, we can see that the main type, main, one of the main type of slab are, uh, bridges are slab or beam or girder bridges. The most basic type of bridge br bridge cross section is the uh, beam or girder bridges and slab bridges. If the uh, Okay, we can discuss that later. Type of slabs, uh, sl type of this uh, slab, beam, and girder. This is uh, what we have studied in the beta beta classes. We can we know that the simply supported beams, that is, uh, the slab is kept over two supports. Then it be, it will become the simply supported one. And slab bridges are nothing but for the uh, roadway. We will just put a slab on over the support there will not be any uh, beam underneath this one that is slab bridge the thickness of slab will be high then a modification to this slab bridge voids will voids has been introduced and in the case of slab bridge we will be constructing uh, maximum to 10 to 12 meter only for slab bridges and in the case of void slabs if it is the span is greater than 15 to 20 meter we can go for void slabs that uh, in the uh, in the void slab is nothing but we will introduce some voids inside this slab bridge, and if the void size is greater than sixty percent, then it will be considered as box girders. Now we can uh, classify the uh, bridge according to the superstructure. That is uh, solid slab. Solid slab span up to one two. 10 meter span with RCC and 10 to 15 meter with the PSC. That is solid slabs. That is the uh, most uh, most widely used in uh, small streams and all. And uh, vo void slab I already explained. Span greater than 10 to 20 meter RCC and 15 to 30 meter we can go for PSC. Not, uh, this void slab is nothing but the voids will be introduced in between the in the solid slabs. That is void slabs. Then comes the T beam with the slab. If the span is 10 to 25 meter, we will go for RCC T beam. 
that uh, nothing this is the tb this this portion will act as a t this portion will act as t and that's why it's known as t beam with the slabs over this slab this is the slab and that will be constructed up from 10 meter to 25 meters then comes the eye girder eye girder is this one this one is eye girder eye girder we, uh, we can go from span to 25 to 40 meter for PSC. Nowadays, we are going more than this 40 meter, 45, 50 meter. We are going for eye girder up, and uh, slab will be RCC slab. This will be pre stressed PSC. Then comes the box girder. Box girder, I have already explained. If the voids is more than 60 percent, we will consider this, uh, it does consider it as a void slab, uh, sorry, box girder, then the span. If it is RCC box girder, then we can go up to 20 to 30 meter. And uh, if it is PSC, uh, then we will go from 30 to 60 meter span we can achieve. And if it is set <laughs> segmental construction, we can uh, go up to 120 meters. This is box girder. In flyover, uh, flyover leg structures, we are mainly using this box girders. And then comes the steel plate girder, most uh, most widely used by the railways in older names. Now also they are using. <coughs> then uh, steel plate girder span 15 to 45 meters, and maximum will be going up to 45 meters only. Then steel trusses, steel truss uh, bridge are uh, 20 to 120 meters span we can achieve. Then uh, arch, but in Kerala condition we are not at all using. Uh, nowadays we are not at all insisting with steel trusses. Then uh, arch bridge. Arch bridge we are using when, wherever we have uh, some problem with uh, this uh, uh, clearance. Then we uh, clearance means maximum flood level to this uh, flood level to uh, bottom of the bridge that is freeboard. Uh, for uh, if freeboard is uh, very less, we can go for this uh, arch bridge that will be governed by the site condition. Then uh, up to 120, 150 meter, we can go in steel or a combination of PSC and steel. Then the extra dose, extra dose is a combination of cable state bridge and uh, uh, RCC bridge. Then extra dose span to 60 to 200 meter. We will explain it later. Then cable state bridge can go up to 500 meter and suspension bridge also we will discuss that is up to 500 meter we can <laughs> then plate girder bridges this uh, i said that it's already uh, it was widely used in railways this plate girder bridges this plus bridge steel truss uh, it was all in olden time in british time british era it was widely used nowadays uh, due to the metallurgical properties we are not at all getting good materials that's why i think it's not uh, widely used nowadays there are uh, four main type of physical bridges that is uh, beam that is beam whatever uh, i it whatever it be the beam and slab structure will be there Sorry. Mm. Then comes the arch bridge. A different type of arch, arch are there. Anyway, we will discuss. Then comes the suspension bridge and cable state bridge. And we will discuss all these things. Then according to the support system, we will classify the bridge as simply supported bridge. We all know what is simply supported. We have beam, simply supported beam, we know. Same way, this is a simply supported girder bridge. Okay. Then continuous girder type, type bridge. Continuous girder is nothing but a bridge, a simply support bridge with the support will be uh, connected with a concrete or a diaphragm that is di cast in situ diaphragm. This uh, precast eye girder or eye girder can be uh, brought to the brought over the support and the sub and the middle support it can and the cast institute diaphragm can be co constructed then the continuous bridge it's come nowadays we are constructing integral type of bridges integral type of bridge as the name indicates the <laughs> precast uh, eye girder support system 
and the PR, everything is monolithically constructed. Then it is comes the integral bridge. In the adenogenous integral and continuous bridge, there will not be any expansion ga gap in between this up in, in the supports. That is our advantage. Then cable state and double uh, double cantilever bridge. This is double cantilever bridge. We can this cantilever portion, and this is cable state bridge. Now we will discuss about the extra dose bridge. This is the other bridge. This is supported, supported, or uh, and this beam is there, and the depth of beam will be somewhat high, and as the span increases, the depth depth will also increases. And in cable state bridge, this. This is pylon. The support system is known as pylon. The cable will be the cable will be supported from the pylon, and the bridge will be there. Slab will be there. Slab will be tied to the pylon. In the case of extra dose bridge, it's a combination of this uh, uh, ordinary girder bridge and a cable shed bridge. The uh, length and the length of pylon is uh, reduced, but a small depth of this uh, RCC or uh, uh, PSC girder is introduced here. That is extra dose bridge, a combination of girder bridge and cable shed bridge. Then classification of the materials used that, that we know masonry is there, reinforced to concrete is there, priest priestess to concrete is there, steel is there, composition of PSC, RCC, and uh, steel or RCC, whatever it be. Then timber is also used as bridges in some cases. Then classification is made on the construction methodology. <laughs> this is task institute method. We will use N-Gator or something like that for the supporting the uh, formwork. And we will cast the uh, girder, slab, everything. That is a cast institute method. That is the uh, Everything will be casted at the site totally. Then the precast construction style. Nowadays, we are uh, promoting this precast constructions. Precast constructions, the, the entire girder will be casted in the uh, yard, casting yard, and will be uh, taken to the site and uh, kept in the position by the use of cranes and all. Uh, and another one is cantilever method of construction. In the precast construction, the degree of quality control will be very high because we can have a good control over, over this uh, concrete. Uh, and curing everything so that uh, in the case of precast construction, the degree of quality control will be very high. <coughs> then cantilever method of construction. Cantilever method of construction. Uh, I think now in Kerala we are not not using this one, but we can use. Uh, this is nothing, nothing but we are uh, the slab will be casted from a pier point and will be extended towards the center of the slab and. Uh, a form traveler will be there on both sides of the pier, and it will be moving towards the center portion of the slab. And uh, it will be um, pre-stressed during the construction, and uh, it's one of the fast methods of construction. But some sophisticated equipment are required, that is form traveler extra we need. Then um, incremental launching method. In the case of incremental launching method, uh, a large nose will be there, and uh, we'll be constructing uh, a portion of the bridge uh, slab or whatever it be, slab deck um, beam, whatever it be. And in front of that one, a launching nose will be there. And uh, after constructing a span, we'll be pushing this man toward, uh, pushing the span towards the uh, supporting system. And uh, uh, the next one will be casted simultaneously in the back side of the back side of the beam and that will be pushed again the next one will be cast that's incremental launching method then comes the span by span method of launching the uh, span and their span will be casted in the yard and will be shifted to the side by use of a, a gantry girder or something like that then uh, the uh, construction will be very fast then the segmental method of construction. In the segmental method of construction, the entire segment and the bridge will be considered as small, small segments of three to four meters height, and that be constructed in the yard. And here also the degree of uh, quality control will be very high. Then uh, the uh, construction is also very fast. We can stitch all these things, uh, all these uh, segments together at the site that can be lifted using crane or a gantry or something like that. In, the, in this case, the construction 
construction will be very fast. Then the according to the position of bridge um, bridge floor related to the superstructure, we can we can divide this as the duct type bridge, through type bridge, semi through type bridge, double duct bridge. In in the case of double duct bridge we, uh, in Andhra Pradesh, we have a rail a rail come road bridge is there, uh, and in Nagpur also metros are going over this uh, uh, road bridge that is double duct bridges. It is then semi through bridge. This is the arch bridge. Uh, through bridge. Then this above arch bridge. This one is above arch bridge. Arch is there, and the bridge, uh, road is going through this way above the arch one. This is above arch bridge, and this through arch bridge. Through arch bridge means arch is there, and the uh, roadway is going inside this one. This is through arch bridge. Then comes the inclined leg bridge. Inclined leg bridge. If the valley or what uh, valley is too deep. We, we are if we are not able to construct this uh, foundation from the bottom of the valley we can construct this uh, as an inclined leg bridge the uh, roadway is over this one now we'll discuss the cable state bridge cable state bridge are i already said a girder will be there girder will be supported uh, by the cables stay cable system to a pylon pylon will be there and uh, there are different uh, arrangements for stay cable system. The, and the one is fan type system. The and their and their cable will be coming from one point. And if uh, some if it is uh, the cable stay cables are uh, not coming in a single point, then it is modified fan system. And if harp system means all the cable setters are at an acute distance, kept at an acute distance. That is half system of cable state bridges, and the world's longest cable state bridge is Rusky Island Bridge in Russia. And the particulars of this Rusky Island Bridge is, it is uh, it's having a length of one thousand one one hundred and four meters center span length. Is there? This length is one hundred one thousand one hundred and four meters length. Is there? Then total bridge length is uh, 1,885 meters. Then uh, bridge width is 29.5 meter. And it's a big one of the biggest, uh, one of the longest cable straight bridges, this one. And we can see the pylon height is 324 meters. This height is 324 meters. And number of cable stays, 168 numbers are there. Longest cable, this one longest cable is having a length of 579 meters and shortest is 135 meters. The shortest one is 135 meters. This is the mechanical behavior of cable stay bridge. The load will be transferred, uh, load will be from uh, slab, it will be upward, and pylon will be giving this load to the downward. Then uh, next to the Cable shared bridge. We have the suspension bridges. Suspension bridge. We um, similarly pylons are there, and one cable, one cable is anchored at one support, one end, and it will be taken to the pylon, and again it, it will be taken to the next pylon, and it will be anchored. And from this cable, the stay cables are there. It means the it's the slab is anchored to this cable, main cable. This is known as suspender cables, and this is the main cable, and will be anchored on both sides, and will be a tower that is uh, pylons. We call it as pylons, and this is the deck or roadway. This is suspension bridge, means this is suspend. The slab is suspended from this main cable. This is the world's longest suspension bridge, Akashikyo Kaikyo Bridge in Japan. And the total length is 3,911 meters, height is 282 meters, and uh, longest span is 1,991 meters. Clear, clear, span, uh, clear uh, depth between the maximum water level and the bridge is 65.72 meters. That means it, it allows almost all the ships to pass beneath this one. Then we will uh, we have high level bridge and submersible bridge. Submersible bridge means uh, it will if it is over a 
uh, waterway uh, it, and the waterway allows the passage of boats or ships whatever it be in uh, whenever this ships or what uh, ships or these vessels comes the bridge can be submerged into the water that is submersible bridge this high level bridge means high uh, the NCFL will be above road level then comes the mobile bicycle bridge that is or mobile sing or transporter bridge that is if the ship or vessel comes the bridge can be lifted up that is Movable bicycle bridge, and this is a movable bicycle bridge. Bridge can be either it can be opened or it can be tilted also. Now we have discussed almost all type of bridge. Now we will discuss about some failure also. We can, uh, I think, before uh, six years back, in almost all papers and uh, media, this picture was there, and come. Uh, this is not in Kerala, anyway. Uh, it, it was in Himachal Pradesh. And this one was in Kerala. And why this is happening? The failure happens. The reason for failure is improper site investigation, inadequate design, bad construction practice, natural calamities, and accidents during construction. These are the reasons for failure. And we will discuss it, uh, how, can, how we can eliminate all these things. For this, the success of your bridge is roughly 50% design and 50% construction. And the design 50%, we can subdivide into structural engineering, hydraulic engineering 10 to 20%, aesthetics 15, 5 to 15%, environmental engineering 5 to 10%, transportation engineering 5 to 20%, uh, geotechnical engineering 10 to 30%. That is uh, that we the design part we can divide like this. And in the case of a bridge, we have to we uh, conduct different type of studies. That is the main and important one is the preliminary survey. In the preliminary survey, we have to be careful about the top topography. We have to take the topography, um, and we have to study the catchment area. We have to find. Uh, we have to study the hydrology geotechnical data we have to collect seismology and navigation construction resources nearby bridges traffic data everything we have to uh, take care of and we will discuss now by other topography it to collect the necessary data for preparation of working drawings and based on this topographic survey only so survey we are doing with the to uh, total session leader whatever it be uh, different methods of surveys are there and we uh, we collect the data from the survey and uh, Based on this data only, we are making the uh, draw, making the designs, uh, the functional design as well as the uh, structural design. On finalization of this bridge, we have to uh, transfer the uh, center line. What are what are the designs we have to transfer to the <laughs> the ground also? That for that also we require the topographical survey details. And in the case of uh, bridge uh, choice, the uh, right side for a crucial decision is in, uh, planning and design is a uh, for a bridge is very crucial. And in the case of um, cities, we will not be getting much choice. But in the case of uh, rural areas, we are we will get a wide choice. We can construct bridge at a very very uh, convenient positions. Then. For the selection criteria of bridge location, the, uh, the alignment up to length of 60 meter, the governing factor will be the existing road road alignment. We will be sticking on the existing road alignment if the length of bridge is less than 60 meter. If the length is uh, more than 60 meter and less than 300 meter, we will consider both the alignment of bridge as well as the alignment of the road. And if the uh, length of bridge is more than 300 meter. We will mainly stick on the uh, alignment of bridge, and we will not consider the alignment of road. That is, if uh, we will uh, go for the suitable locations for the bridge, then, and we'll be considering they are only at the suitable locations. In other cases, we will be negotiated. The characteristics of an ideal site for the bridge across a river, that is a narrow channel with firm bank will be the ideal, uh, ideal location for a bridge. 
then suitable high banks above high flood level on each side, rock on or other hard, in or e erodible uh, strata close to the river bed should be ideal for the bridge site. If the banks are not too good and erodible, we can find this type of this type of failures failures in the bridge construction. The bridge is, uh, here the bridge doesn't have uh, anything damaged, but uh, the and they are river bank has been washed off here also we can see during the uh, our uh, last uh, flood 18 flood or 19 flood in kerala a uh, lot of debris material came and uh, accumulated here and what happened uh, the bandway what we have provided is not there now and uh, the river has taken its own way and uh, eroded all the banks and bandway then by constructing a bridge we, we should be take care of the danger of flood any gravia, gra graveyards and built up area frequently drainage crossing that 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 type of area should be avoided <coughs> now selection criteria of a bridge we will we have to uh, care should be taken to investigate a number of probable alternative sites and then decide on the site which is likely to serve the needs of a bridge at the least cost. Sometimes the least cost will not be possible. Uh, this is a one uh, practical case we have done in Caligat. This is this is uh, Chalia River, and this is Bepur Bepur uh, Bepur port is somewhere here, and the uh, the alignment of uh, alignment of coastal highways was coming like this, and this was the coastal highway. Uh, and uh, the proposal for a bridge uh, to cross this Chalia in coastal highway, uh, it was initially it was decided that we will construct a tunnel over this one at this area, this is Bayport port area, and a tunnel at this point. In the case of uh, tourism and all, it will be good, but uh, the cost of construction was very high, and uh, we ignored that one. The second one was the proposal, uh, this fourth one. Uh, this at this point, accessing bridge was there, but it was too old. But uh, and the uh, we can see the bridge at this uh, river at this uh, location is very narrow. Uh, but the coastal highway passes through this area, and to negotiate this river, uh, to cross this river, we have to travel along this area, this route. It is around six kilometers length. So we did, decided not to consult here, and we then. When for this one, this area, it is this is a, the up to this area. This port uh, belongs to port area, so we cannot make we cannot construct anything here. This area, so just after this port area, we decided to construct. Uh, in uh, we decided to investigate this area, and it is found that is the length is around one kilometer, but this was only two hundred and fifty meters. But here it is one kilometer. Then uh, the co construction cost will be high. And uh, it is very near to the port area also. So it was decided to, con if you want to consider this at um, bridge at this point, we have we have to go for cable shade or uh, extra dose bridges. Then the cost will be very high. Then again, we ins uh, then we went to this area. This area, even though the length is 2.5 meters to this point, and uh, this road is already developed under KFB scheme. So this is 24 meter wide road it was. Then the construction yeah, from this one to this one construction cost was zero. New construction cost was zero, and this is 350 meters. Now we we are decided decided to construct the bridges at this location, so that uh, at 2.5 kilometer we have to come here, then we can go go up to here. Uh, uh, this is around uh, again a two kilometers here. That's four kilometer additional length we have to travel, but the cost is somewhat very low. And finally, we decided to consider the bridge at this location. This type of mechanism we have to develop for the uh, choosing a uh, bridge location. Then comes the topography. Topography we can uh, get from the Survey of India map, or nowadays we have for big projects, and uh, nowadays for small projects, we can uh, do a total station survey or LIDAR survey, whatever it be. Then we have to collect the hydraulic particulars, maximum flood level, annual, ordinary flood, flood levels, low water level, high high tide level, velocity at a high high flood level, etc. 
that can be uh, the um, high flood level we can uh, collect the data from local people or uh, uh, structures in the water uh, in some uh, hydraulic structures then we have already marked this high flood level during the uh, 2018 and 19 floods that we can collect from hydraulic structures nearby hydraulic structures then we have to calculate the discharge uh, we can we have we are having a lot of methods we have already studied studied all these six from stage uh, discharge curves or by unit hydrograph or by area velocity method. We are, for small bridges, we are using the area velocity method or we can use this catchment area method. Area velocity method is nothing but that all the Manning's formula. We can use that any Manning's formula for discharge calculation. Then we have to find out the uh, scour depth and all. For this, uh, if there is a uh, scour, we can uh, do the protection like this. Then we will uh, go for the geotechnical uh, investigation and geo uh, seism seismic data we will collect. Uh, that also we can uh, get it from the other departments or we can uh, have a local inquiry to the people. People, uh, if there is any, and we can, uh, or other we can uh, go for the seismic sounds uh, are there already published. That that also can be taken. Then some faults in uh, the rock falls will be there. That also to be taken care of. Then the comes the geotechnical one of the important uh, investigation, geotechnical investigation. We are using mainly auger, auger boring for the geotechnical investigation, subsoil investigation it is. And uh, many people ask their doubt, uh, how much borehole we have to take for a bridge? That is one borehole has to be taken at each PR location. And uh, we will take uh, up to the rock level. Uh, if we are uh, taking up to the rock level, we have to uh, bore a f additional five meter in the rock, 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 uh, rock also. Uh, then in the upstream and downstream, two hundred meters, we have to take an additional uh, boreholes. That is, we have to uh, get an idea about the uh, rock strata and all. Then for the protection work also, we can take boreholes. Additional boreholes can be taken at the protection work location also. Then uh, this is a bore, bore chart we will be getting after uh, boring. Uh, from this one, we can identify what type of soil is there. This is, this is what type of soil is, uh, soil is there, and what is the N value, and what is the depth of each layer and all. This is the core box. Core box is nothing. Uh, the, we will uh, keep the samples collected from the boreholes in a box like this, and that can be uh, serially numbered and kept so that it can be used during the construction purpose. We can uh, have a good idea about the soil and the rock strata, everything. In uh, Kerala, we will find uh, we can divide the entire land into three different areas that is according to the depth of foundation for bridges so, uh, for high land that is this red colored area high land we uh, we will be having the shallow or well founded we can use the shallow or well foundation or or we can go for open foundation and the mid area this green area in this area the foundation depth will be varying from 15 to 35 meters and for yellow this area the lowland area that is varying from 35 to 75 meter depth we have to provide for the foundation of uh, pipe foundation and if you are uh, taking a bore in this uh, rock the design people will ask you what is the cr and rqd uh, what is the cr cr is nothing but core recovery core recovery means if you are go if you are digging a uh, bore of two meter height and uh, we, if, and we are getting uh, some materials from inside that uh, log uh, this uh, if you are making a uh, bore of uh, two, uh, one, 100 200 uh, 1200 mm and we we be getting uh, materials from inside from uh, inside this bore log and we we will add all these things all small small pieces and we will we will be getting a value and uh, divide by the total depth what we have already uh, made the bore hole. That uh, this that will be giving the percentage. That is core recovery. What are the recovered from the bore hole divided the total bore, bore uh, boring we have done. 
and then RQD. RQD is length of soundness increases that is uh, greater than 100 mm. We will be from this one, we will uh, remove all uh, small, small pieces which are less than 10, uh, 10 centimeter size. We will be removing this one and the remaining will be added and divided by this total bore we have done into 100. That is RQD, raw quality designation. If it is less than 25 RQD, then the rock is not good and up to 50, somewhat good, 75 uh, good and if it is uh, 75 to 100, that will be very good. During geotechnical, geotechnical investigation, we can we will find the rock strata and all. This is a uh, uh, load carrying shape of uh, load carrying profile of this uh, different type of rock strata. And during investigation, we should be take care of the navigational requirements. In some cases, it will be national waterway, national waterway, or uh, any other. Uh, just, uh, just I uh, explained earlier, it is, it, if it is near to some port and all, we have to take care of the vessels coming to this port. Then uh, we'll be, uh, we have to be take care of the con uh, availability of construction materials, skilled levels, special equipments, everything we have to take care um, during the planning and investigation of a bridge. Then other, another thing is the availability of land. We, if uh, if we want to construct a good bridge, we have to be uh, take care of the availability of the land for construction of store, gallery yards, fabrication shops, precasting yards, staff quarters, and offices, etc. And another thing, we have to uh, we have to watch and we have to study the existing structures near to that bridge. That we from that one we can get a lot of data and. Uh, that is like uh, erosion, uh, scouring, uh, and uh, corrosion, etc. We can that uh, degree of corrosion, etc. We can get from the nearby uh, structures. <laughs> then the traffic study. From traffic study, we have uh, traffic study. We have to uh, count the traffic volume count. We have to do OD survey. We have to done. We have to do speed and delay survey we have to do. We have to do the pedestrian volume survey. Based on this traffic volume count only, we are deciding the number of lanes required for the bridge and all. And in the pedestrian, pedestrian we, have, we should be very careful. If we are constructing a, or a, if you are demolishing an existing bridging and con bridge and constructing a new one there, we should be very careful about this pedestrian volume survey. Uh, the traffic will be diverted through some other uh, some other roads in the case of a uh, reconstruction, but uh, for the pedestrian, they will not be going in that. Uh, if uh, that diverted traffic will be mostly uh, go, uh, diverted through a four or five kilometers away from this bridge, and but the pedestrians will not be going through that way. We have to construct a pedestrian footpath or something like that. We have to take care of this pedestrian in the case of reconstruction of these bridges. Basically, this, uh, from this uh, traffic survey and all, number of traffic lines, approach and gradient, need of central median, everything, uh, need of footpath extra, we'll be finding from the investigations what we have done already. Then the uh, we will have a socio-economic, techno-economic feasibility survey. That is, we have to consider what are the you know, profit we'll be getting and uh, what are, uh, based on this, we can, uh, decide the type of bridge width of bridge length of bridge, length we can't decide and the, uh, what are the uh, amenities we have to give everything we can decide on and design uh, decided on the techno economic feasibility survey then the durability durability is ability of a structure to perform during the design service life or for its intended purpose with the anticipated maintenance but without major repair being necessary that's durability of concept now we are making our bridge for the 100 years of life then uh, this additional information that is uh, in the case of a bridge we will be constructing uh, a length of 50 meter road minimum to the bridge that is a part of the bridge only the idea approach road <coughs> then uh, 
we know that there are different uh, classification for a bridge according to the lane width then single lane bridge is uh, not less than or should be not less than 4.25 meters two lane bridge is uh, not less than 7.5 meter multiple lane a multiple lane bridge is 7.5 meter plus 3.5 meter for every additional lane for curved bridges extra widening as per irc standards for highways can be provided and uh, this is the two lane carriageway two lane carriageway we have uh, carriageway with this, this one and we, we will be having a footpath from the others and three lane carriageway we, if we want we can construct a footpath also in this side otherwise 7.5 meter plus 3.5 this is actually it is six line it's three uh, three line is here and there is a median here and then the next three lines will be here this is a navigational clearance that is uh, if we are going to construct your bridge across this national waterway we have to get permission from inland waterway authority of india iwa in kerala we have nw3 is there coming through kerala then the vertical clearance above hfl will be six meter and the horizontal clearance for canal portion it is 40 meters and river portion is 50 meters and the waterways in the vicinity of port we have to get permission from the port authority uh, and other inland if uh, except the N nw3 other inland waterways we have to get inland navigation uh, permission from inland navigation navigation director in kerala we have at uh, this office at kollam in the absence of such data from the authorities, guidelines stipulated in IRC 6 shall be followed. This is the horizontal clearance and from HFL to bottom of it, that is vertical clearance. Then the vertical clearance uh, in the case of uh, ROB and all, the minimum vertical clearance for any structure provided over the project road shall be 5 meters for non-urban areas and 5.5 meters for urban areas okay this is linear waterway high flood level OFL everything is there then the uh, minimum vertical clearance that is depend upon the uh, discharge uh, discharge of the street if the discharge is 0.3 cumex, cumex then the vertical clearance will be 100 mm and if it is uh, 300 mm uh, 300 uh, cumex then the minimum vertical clearance will be 900 mm and if it is more than 3000 cumex we will be providing 1500 mm vertical clearance and in the case of a canal uh, if we are going to consider the bridge over a canal or a controlled uh, flow or a controlled flow channel minimum 500 mm clearance should be there Now, I think the time is getting over. Anyway, we will uh, discuss about the bridge components also. Bridge components, uh, we can, uh, you can see in the side, foundation is there, superstructure is, substructure is there. For making the estimate and for this um, payment also, the if we are using M30 concrete for foundation, M34 uh, sub, uh, superstructure, substructure, and uh, if we are using M34 superstructure, the payment will be different. For the foundation, different payment will be the substructure, and uh, the payment will be different, and superstructure also the payment will be different. So we have to be very careful about the found uh, the level of foundation, level of superstructure. Also. In the case of bridge, up to the pier cap, up to the pile cap, top of pile cap is considered as foundation up to the top of pile cap that is bottom of pier it will be foundation and from bottom of pier point to beam bottom that will be superstructure and uh, sub uh, sorry substructure beam bottom to pier bottom it is substructure then the from beam bottom to remaining everything it will be under the superstructure in the case of uh, bridge there will be pile will be there pile cap is there pier is there pier cap is there bearings will be there uh, bridge tax slab is there abutment the side one is abutment and the middle uh, middle ones are piers okay and bridge, according to um, uh, bridge foundation uh, there are different type of foundation we have this is open foundation 
and uh, in uh, this is pile foundation and one is another one is uh, well foundation uh, the open foundation we will be using for uh, if the foundation depth that is hard to hard strata is available for a depth of four to six meter we will be using this bridge for, uh, uh, open foundation and if the uh, uh, hard strata depth is between uh, six to twelve meters we will be using this uh, well foundations and if it is more than 12 meter definitely we will be going for this uh, pile foundation nowadays we are using pile foundation while doing the pile we should be very careful uh, in shallow depth uh, we'll be we have to check whether the uh, presence of uh, boulders and uh, pebbles that will make some problem the, then uh, if it is shallow depth in that case only we are nowadays we are using uh, bell foundations and uh, the depth of Anchorage on hard rock, uh, it will be uh, the code is saying that we have to provide uh, two times the diameter of pile. There are different types of pile that all we know and bearing piles, friction piles, and the uh, and bearing and friction piles. And the uh, method of uh, pile foundation, type of boring, rotary boring is there, percussion boring is there. Then we have we have uh, uh, direct mud circulation method. In Kerala, we are mainly using this uh, either this uh, rotary boring or this uh, uh, DMC method. We are using a direct mud circulation method. We are using and this is the pile load test arrangements. We will we have we will make a reaction platform and we will uh, put that uh, hydraulic jack here and we will apply the load and we will study what are the deflections coming to this pile. That is a uh, static pile load test. Then dynamic pile load test is there. A sudden load is applied on the pile and we will monitor the uh, deflections and the changes coming on this uh, pile with uh, sophisticated equipment. That is dynamic pile load test. That is very simple one also. We can have the result in uh, half an hour. This is lateral uh, pile load test. The uh, 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 jacket will be provided here and uh, it will be, uh, uh, exert some force on the pipe that is uh, lat lateral pile load test. Lateral load will be applied. This is pull out test. This is a well foundation. Well, this is the cutting edge, well curb, and bottom plugging is there, and well steering is this one, and top plugging is this one, then well cap will be there. And we can consider it to the PR over this one. This is a, a typical cross sections, different cross sections for well. This is the well foundation starting stage. This is cutting, cutting at just this one, and we will consider the well staining over this one. Well staining is going on. And it will be seen. The mud will be removed from inside from this well, and this is a dissing. Then comes the type of substructures. Substructures, nothing but a pier. Different uh, type of circular pier is there, flared pier, pier is there, different types of piers are there. Solid wall pier is here, then hammerhead circular pier is here. This flared, flared pier. Rigid frame pier is this one, and pier is integrated with the superstructure. This is integrated with the superstructure. RCC pier integrated with the superstructure. This one. This cast in situ construction method. We will construct some false uh, arrangements here uh, for supporting the TB manhole. This is for the false arrangements for uh, uh, deck slab. Again, the false arrangement staging for bridge. And while constructing uh, these uh, false arrangements, over uh, uh, the we should we should be very careful about the flood situations. We have to take care of the flood and all. Then the um, deck slab will be casted in the yard and brought in the site and can be, can be kept using the crane and all. And this also pre-cast tiger with the cast in situ deck slab. The tiger is already casted, and the slab will be casted later. 
and the bearings one of the important part of the bridge is bearing there are different type of bearings are avail available laminated elastomeric bearings are there and pod bearings are there nowadays we are mainly using this pod bearing because the life is somewhat higher uh, compared to this plane or strip pad bridge bearings are used for transfer of forces from superstructure to the substructure allowing the following types of movements to the superstructure that's it will allow trans uh, translational movements and the rotational movements different type of rollers are there pin roller roller rock uh, roller rocker metal sliding bearings are there this is a uh, pin bearing rotational movement is allowed and lateral and uh, translational movements are restricted that is the use of pin bearing single roller bearing it is sing we can see this one single roller bearing a roller is there and a plate is there it is single roller bearing then multiple roller bearing multiple rollers are there and roller type bearing with the gear arrangements this gear arrangements are there then rocker bearing rocker bearings uh, a pin will be in the top and uh, sliding sliding plate will be in the bottom all these types of bearings are, we have explained now that they are mainly used in uh, uh, steel steel bridges steel type bridges then uh, the new era of uh, bearings are with the ptfe poly tetrafluoroethylene coated um, bearings are now we are using that is uh, i will show this, this type of pod bearing in the case of pod bearing we are using ptfe sliding surface will be introduced this is what so it will give a smooth uh, surface for sliding control. This spot bearing. This spot bearing comes of a shallow steel cylinder. And uh, inside this uh, steel cylinder, we'll be having uh, a brass plate will be there. And a uh, rubber, rubber will be inside this one. And uh, on load, the rubber will be behave as a uh, fluid. And it will, uh, since the bearing will not resist bending moment, it should be provided with an even surface and it will provide a uh, rotation also this is ptfe bearing this is all the type of elastomeric bearing this is the testing arrangements of ptfe bearing then comes the expansion joints expansion joints strip seal joints we are using the strip seal joints and uh, compression seal joints uh, if the uh, change in temperature is less we will go for the strip seal joint in the regions where change in temperature is very high we will go for compression seal joint etc this is expansion joint strip seal expansion joint after construction this will be there and the bridge aesthetics one of the important thing nowadays and uh, our ministry is also saying that the bridge should be very aesthetic the super should be as sleek in proportion to the span shallow in harmony with the surroundings and sim should be symmetrically bridge element this is the uh, one of the aesthetic bridge aesthetics now we are using this type of bridge in many areas uh, a center span will be this uh, uh, arch and uh, combination of arch and eye guider system we are using and uh, the bridge is uh, somewhat uh, usually with this uh, surroundings this type of construction this type of aesthetics we are bringing to the bridge These all are the bridges constructed by Kerala PWD and somewhere, somewhere in uh, construction stage also. This is the recently opened uh, Kottambadik. This is also recently opened uh, Valiari Ekel Bridge. This is also the recently constructed uh, Elathur Korapura Bridge in Calicut District. And uh, um, for the mixed design of bridge, we are using IS10262 at IRC112, not IS456 mix design we are going for irc 112 and is 10262 okay. then pre-stressing is there then uh, for the pre-stressing we'll be using the tendons of uh, we will call it as uh, 70 13 or uh, 70 15 that is 7 means number of uh, 
number of uh, strands and t is uh, t, this 13 denotes this uh, diameter of each bar and the anchorage is there these are anchorages this is the arrangements inside this bridge in inside a i girder or a t beam whatever it be psc girder this the cable will be going like this and will be st stressed after concreting are the cross section views of anchorage system and the jack system is this one the single jack is mono mono or single jack is there multi strand jack is also there and this is the pumping uh, hydraulic oil pumping arrangements this is a grout mixer after this uh, stressing stressing is not at all a small subject we have to take one or three hours one or two three hours for this explaining all this uh, process of this uh, stressing and after stressing we will uh, grout the uh, this hole this uh, cable holes this is the grouting pump and hole this is the uh, arrangements we are then doing for this stressing this is stressing jack we have And we will find the elongation and uh, st uh, load load given to these uh, strands and all. And the uh, code of practice is IRC 5 for specification code for practice of road bridges we are using. And IRC 6, 78, 83, IRC 21 extra we are using for the design and planning of bridges. These are beautiful bridges across the world. This one is uh, we have planned for in this Bepur area. Kerala PW is doing this one. And this is also a Kunyali Varaka bridge in a coastal highway coming in Kalikat. So, uh, this is the Shadagri bridge. And we will give you a you know, small idea about this one and we will finish this one. This is a Tushadagri bridge which is uh, fused with nature and nature. And the designer was Dr. P.K. Aravindakshan, Aravind late Dr. P.K. Aravindakshan, retired professor IAT Madras, and principal consultant to Sri Giri consultant, consultants. And the total length of this bridge was uh, 110 meter, and width is, width is 11 meter. Uh, above, it's uh, considered as above arch bridge and uh, constructed over Chalipuda River. The year of commission was 2016 and location in Calicut. Uh, the, one of the important thing was it was constructed 37 meters above the bridge, uh, above the bottom of the river. The to uh, top height was 37 meters. The type of foundation was open foundation only. Then the slab is supported over 25 columns on each side and these columns are supported over Two arches and arches is uh, arches are resting on mat foundation, open foundation. It is highest arch varies from uh, the height of the arch varies from 180 centimeter to 120 centimeter, and bottom foundation is above maximum flood level. Bottom of foundation is above MFL, and bridge was uh, at some portion the bridge was curved in plan also, and the length of arch is 64.35 meter, and the slope slope of uh, that roadway is 1 in 25. The high, and the height difference between two ends of the bridge is 4.344 meters. This is the bridge. And the foundation is this one. And this one is the foundation. It is above the MFL. This was the MFL. And it's above the MFL. And constructed arch like this. And from the arch, we constructed columns. And this above this column, the beam is, uh, the slab is supported. And this side also, we doesn't have any support. And But this side has support is there. This is the arch. And uh, during construction also, we can provide a pre-camber for the deflection. In order to take the deflection, we provided a pre-camber like this. If these red lines, they give the pre-camber of this one. This Professor Aravindin came to the site and gave given direction to us. This is the open foundation provided for this bridge. That is uh, 9.5 meter into 6 meter into 300, uh, 3 meters. That is the open foundation we provided. This is the reinforcement arrangement for the open foundation. All these are 32 mm diabas also. This is the open foundation one, foundation one and found, foundation one and foundation two. This is the construction of substructure. Uh, substructure. 
it is very at the bottom it is 180 centimeter here and 120 centimeter at the top of the arch and the columns are constructed from this arch this is the column constructed from this arch two column uh, two arches are there on both sides and uh, 25 this type of columns are constructed from this arch and one side is this, like this this is uh, photos we are taken during the construction um, uh, this, this portion was ab above this river during, before the flood comes we uh, managed to construct this area this center portion and then came came to the side portion the entire uh, system of uh, scaffolding we are done with the cup and lock system for the entire portion and some grips or grips was also used and the one of the most difficult pro program was uh, concreting of this arch and all because if we we have kept this uh, concrete at uh, concreting mixer machine was here but uh, concrete has to be taken place at 30, 37 meter below this one and the slope is there and the if the slab slum is too if some high the slum is somewhat high then it the entire uh, concrete will be descent uh, the slurry will come first and uh, uh, it will get choked. That is one of the main issues we have faced during the construction. Anyway, 2016, uh, the work was started in 2014, uh, December or something like that. And the, during May 2016, we completed this project within the time period. Our chief engineer visited the site. This is the present stage. Okay, I think the time is also a little bit high. Anyway, thank you. If any doubt, you can ask. Sir, there are already some questions in the chat box. Uh, so, should I read it out or will you read it? Okay, in static pilot testing, compulsory or uh, can we go with the dynamic? In the case of stat, uh, pilot test, uh, if there is uh, if uh, anything is not specified in your BOQ, you can go for uh, this uh, dynamic load also. There is no uh, need for uh, static pilot test if it is not in your BOQ. Mm, what is the situation in which we have go for lateral load testing? Lateral load testing uh, in the code also we have to do this uh, lateral load test because some movements will be there. Movements means if uh, some vessels or something like hit uh, hit in the bridge, if, and it will it may damage the pipe system. For that we have to ascertain this lateral load test. We can do with lateral load test. Sir, could you give some light on technical aspects of Pala River Bridge? Sorry, that is under the Pala River Bridge. I will not talk anything because uh, there are many. Uh, I will not uh, talk detail, but uh, there are so many features for the failure of Pala River. Uh, the especially uh, we we uh, read in the newspaper that uh, the quality of um, concrete was not good, but we can see. The uh, they are used the RMC from a um, good client and all, but uh, while coming to Kochi, we can see that the uh, uh, what we got the traffic block is very high in Kochi in that time. Is, uh, if our the concrete will be, we have to pour the concrete within three to four hours, three maximum three hours, we will be getting the delay. But if uh, and uh, and they have made the concrete for three three hours uh, delayed uh, means uh, three hours time but if they are not able to pour it in three hours the what will happen the concrete will be getting uh, uh, initial setting time will be over and uh, during uh, initial stage what will they, the the operator of that pump and all they will add some water and they will try to add water, water, water in the uh, later stage also. Then the water, what will happen? The initial concrete is uh, somewhat good, and uh, and the from the transit mixer, the last concrete will be, it will be bad because the time will be over, and they will, they had already added a lot of 
water and the water cement ratio has been already changed and all this made one of the re this is a one of the reason by the for the uh, strength of concrete is uh, very bad uh, in some location uh, everywhere it is not like that in some location the quality of concrete was not up to the mark that is the one of the reason is uh, this one and uh, whether we have to design former yes definitely we have to design the former and give it as a uh, separate items uh, no in the in more data we will not give uh, separate uh, rate for uh, this uh, form work but in the special type of bridges that is arch bridge cable straight bridge uh, uh, extra dose bridge etc we can give the uh, we can we have to find out the separate data for concreting in the case of uh, arch bridge uh, arch bridge we are giving around six 60,000 rupees for uh, per m cube of concrete because if we are going to construct this arch we have to keep the entire system of homework for at least one, uh, six months at every location and we, we have go, um, we can re we can't reuse this homework for more than six times if it is steel also because most probably in kerala condition we are keeping this uh, uh homework for six months in the bridge location that will be get uh, corroded the, then we uh, in that case the court gives not only the courts uh that uh, brown book is there uh, more the specific specification it allows us to uh, calculate this uh, special in a uh, rate for this concrete under special conditions that is uh, they have explained it as uh, arch bridge cable state bridge etc or special type of bridges we can calculate the rate of this concreting that is that includes the form work that separate measurement will we can't take then any crs are related to permission required for construction of a bridge yes if it is uh, if we are constructing the bridge in a uh, near crs area we have to get permission i have uh, explained to you that um, told about uh, kunyali marikar bridge that is very near to see uh, and uh, now i am taking permission from crz uh, authorities the permission for which is uh, almost ready then after getting only uh, that permission only we will be constructing that bridge crz is must i think uh, we have to design for okay i think i think uh, i think i have explained this one any more doubt Uh, hope there are no further queries. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful presentation. And now I am to invite Engineer Deepthi Tiruvannamalai District Secretary A O E K to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Deepthi. Uh, I'm Secretary, Association of Engineers, Kerala, Tiruvannamalai Chapter. So hope uh, you all have an extremely uh, useful technical session, uh, which explained uh, from the history of bridges. Um, so we had a detailed discussion on um, uh, classification of bridges and the various parameters uh, used in uh, bridge design and construction. Uh, so and uh, actually, I think uh, uh, we had a very shorter session. Uh, we have to know much more about the bridges. Um, hope we will have more sessions on bridges and uh, due to limited time we have to uh, shorten the session and um, and coming to be uh, coming to my duty uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, baiju sir for such a detailed session he is one of our best uh, bridge engineer uh, in our kerala pwd with immense experience in uh, bridge uh, bridge construction and um, so he has um, explained about the Tusharagiri bridge, uh, one of his best bridge. And um, uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the uh, beautiful section. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Turtle Smart Talk uh, for the fourth session, for our fourth fourth session, for arranging uh, uh, one of our, one of our best session. And uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants uh, in in this session. Thank you and good night.